What's the most effective way to destroy a hard drive? After all, we know that simply deleting something off your computer doesn't fully remove that data from the physical disk. It's simply hidden away until overwritten. But what happens to a hard drive if you drill it, dunk it, microwave it, or toaster it? I asked you guys for suggestions on the most absurd ways to destroy a drive, and today we're testing them out and rating their effectiveness. All I gotta say is, I have really gotta start buying better insurance. Run it over with a car. A two-ton motorized machine versus a tiny little metal box. Who will come out on top? Have I mentioned don't try any of this at home? You definitely shouldn't. And gentlemen, start your engines. Honestly, that's not nearly as much destruction as I was expecting. And sure, there's a few scuff marks on the bottom, but the circuit board and the SATA ports themselves look relatively unscathed. Anyone else expecting it to flatten like a pancake? <laughs> Just me? <laughs> and if we take it back to the studio and plug it in, yep, it works like a charm. So, Road Rage, 3 out of 10. Microwave it. Okay, now that's taking it too far, guys. There's absolutely no way I'm ever... Okay, with our hard drive tossed into our microwave, let's let her cook for a solid 30 seconds. Metal and microwaves do not mix nicely, and as you can see, the sparks literally start flying immediately. <laughs> That's crazy. Again, do not try this at home. I'm gonna be saying that a lot this video. And taking a look at our now fully cooked hard drive, we certainly see some burnt sections where these sparks were flying, although surprisingly contained to only just a couple areas. But now, as we set this up inside of our PC, we can see that... Oh my gosh, it's literally on fire. <laughs> what? A great reminder to always keep a fire extinguisher handy when tinkering with tech. Holy crap, I was not expecting it to literally shoot fire like a little data-filled dragon. Left some solid char marks on my desk as well. But yeah, safe to say that the microwave clearly created some unstable shorts, and when the PC ran current through it, boom, too much heat and nowhere to go but up in flames. 9 out of 10. Super terrifying, but super effective. Completely freeze the hard drive. After being almost flame broiled, ice sounds like a better alternative. And conveniently, I actually ran this freezing experiment in a previous video of mine where I froze and thawed an entire PC. And long story short, the hard drive continued to work as normal after spending the entire night in a literal block of ice. So in terms of destroying data, ice gets a cool 2 out of 10. And in case you're curious what caused the frozen PC to turn green like this, you can check out the entire video up here. To dunk the hard drive in water. Okay, so maybe frozen water Water didn't quite do the job, but what about regular temp, normal H2O? After all, electronics have a knack for not mixing nicely with water. But if we avoid powering on the drive while submerged, we can potentially avoid the hazard of short circuiting. Although that said, hard drives are not that water resistant, made clear by the bubbles indicating liquid seeping into those fragile insides. We've let it soak long enough to fill it up with H2O, but not long enough to get corroded. And for context, I let this drive for another 28 hours, but as you can see, the drive is no longer recognized. So clearly, either I didn't wait long enough for this to completely dry, or the water caused all that internal pressure to get all out of whack. H2O HDD 8 out of 10. This thing is toast. Speaking of toast, I always wondered what would happen if you slotted a hard drive into a toaster. Again, please don't try this at home, but come on, look how perfectly this hard drive fits inside of the toaster. It's almost like they were made for each other. That's amazing. And well, who likes their data nice and crispy? I'm really hoping we don't start a fire like we did with the microwave, but I've started to see a lot of smoke again. So to avoid setting off the fire alarms, let's call that good enough. And honestly, it kind of looks like the sticker was the part that was burning the most. I'm actually not seeing that much electrical burn along the circuits themselves. So now if we pop tart this toaster strudel into our PC, the drive simply doesn't show up, but also doesn't start a fire. But what it does do is end up breaking my motherboard, which is insanely rare for a SATA device to be able to do. But I really don't have another explanation as to why my motherboard all of a sudden stopped accepting power. Crazy. Prime example of why you should let me do all the weird stuff and don't try it at all on yourself at home. A toaster data, 8 out of 10 at destroying hard drives. If all this hard drive destruction is getting you nervous about your own data centers or IT resources, then today's video sponsor is going to perfectly put you at ease. Let's take a peek at the ultimate monitoring and management platform, Pulseway. First, imagine getting an alert for a critical server error, <laughs> maybe for uh, something like this. Even if you're miles away from the office, with Pulseway, you can diagnose and fix that error with just a few taps on your smartphone or tablet. Pulseway not only alerts you, but empowers you to take action instantly. Next, picture this. You're sipping your coffee and receive a notification that one of your workstations needs to be updated. With Pulseway, you can approve and initiate the update fully remotely, ensuring that everything runs smoothly. And of course, cybersecurity is a priority. Pulseway watches your systems like a hawk. Pulseway detects security risks, alerts you, and allows you to choose how to keep your system safe with automation workflows to respond. And that, in a nutshell, is Pulseway, Instant Alerts, Remote Management, and Top-Notch Security. It's like an IT sidekick by your side 24-7.
Experience the power of Pulseway for yourself and stay in control of your IT world. And thank you, Pulseway, for sponsoring this video, and you can learn more in the description down below. Give it the gallium treatment. Oh, this is so creative. Gallium is a metal that's liquid around room temperature, kind of like mercury, but minus all the toxicity. So while safe to humans, gallium is not safe to aluminum. When combined, they have this crazy chemical interaction that brittles the aluminum to the point where it crumbles apart. And aren't hard drives made out of aluminum? If so, this could be one of the coolest ways to literally turn your data into dust. But unfortunately, at least in this specific case, it appears our platters are actually made out of a glass base instead of an aluminum base, because no matter how long this liquid metal sits on top of it, nothing seems to be happening at all. This has a lot of promise with the right hard drive though, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Try to love it. You know hard drive, we may have our separate partitions, but my love for you knows no fragmentation. I feel like we're connected by an invisible SATA cable. You make my heart spin at 7200 revolutions per minute. I don't want something that's not solid in a state of driving me crazy. I want you and all your mechanical inner workings. Will you make me the happiest tech tinkerer in the world? Funny enough, the drive did stop working after that, so I guess like 8 out of 10. <laughs> run a magnet on it. The classic tried and true surefire way to destroy your data, right? Hard drives, after all, store bits of data with magnets themselves. These platters are covered in a magnetic coating and this swiveling arm can create magnetic north and south spots on the disk, evaluating to ones and zeros. So by introducing our own magnet to the equation, can we effectively wipe out this stored data? <laughs> well, believe it or not, with these generic household size magnets, nothing seems to be happening as we run them along the chassis. In fact, upgrading to an even more powerful magnet, one that's 10 times as strong, leads to the same outcome. Wow, I was definitely not expecting that. Turns out very, very strong magnets are required to change the polarity of existing stored data. So unless you have something like a neodymium magnet laying around, I'm giving basic household magnets a 2 out of 10 on the destruction scale. Unplug it while running. Simple enough. As soon as we unplug the drive from the PC, we see it immediately disappear from the file explorer. But if we simply plug it back in and restart the computer, things continue working as normal. 1 out of 10. Just drop it. A few good droppings should do the trick. Another tried and true classic, a Linus special, if you will. With just some basic drops under our belt, our drive actually wasn't all that effective. It was still picked up by the computer right away. So now if we dial things up to slinky mode, <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna leave a mark. At testing it a second time, the drive has now stopped showing up. Those fragile internals got jostled around just enough. 7 out of 10 due to its ease of accessibility. We can all drop things. Leave it outside for years. You know, I've actually done this experiment with CPUs in the past by burying them in my garden for over a year. So a hard drive out here feels all too normal. We'll make some room for the hard drive and, well, now we wait. Make sure you're subscribed for an update in 365 days. It's a drill. Just drill into the disks. Easy peasy. And this was one of the most commented suggestions for destroying a hard drive. And it does seem like a surefire way to make sure the mechanics never work ever again. Although I was surprised by how difficult it was to cleanly drill through all of this metal. Not really all that easy peasy. But with it all said and done, once powered on, the drive gives one tiny little kick before giving up completely. After which it isn't recognized by the PC at all. 8 out of 10 on the destruction scale. Cover the holes with glue. What are those even used for anyway? And why do hard drives explicitly state not to cover them up? Well, hard drives require a very specific internal pressure to keep the magnetic arm the right distance away from the disks. And these little holes help maintain that internal pressure. And fun fact, on the underside, they're actually connected to a tiny little filter, which is pretty neat. But since they say not to cover up these holes, let's do just that and see what happens. Some hot glue will do nicely to fully seal off the breathing hole. And as we power on our PC with the drive connected, Surprisingly, nothing seems too off. In fact, things are continuing to work completely as normal. Since we covered the holes and ran the drive at the same local pressure inside of my studio, nothing changed internally. Realistically though, we probably wouldn't notice any issues unless we covered the drive hole here and then drastically changed our altitude. Austin, invite me on that next plane ride you guys do. <laughs> so covering the hole, 2 out of 10 effectiveness if you're staying local. Open it and put it on a vinyl reader while it's still running. Wow, this one got a bunch of upvotes, so let's see what happens. For the platter to properly fit on the turntable, we're gonna have to disassemble the drive even further. So this in and of itself probably makes this a good way to destroy your data, or at the very least make it a bit easier to hide in your back pocket. Oh man, look how perfect that fits in the middle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the stereo sound of a hard drive platter. 
<laughs> just kidding. There's no way the head of the turntable can read any of the data on the platter itself. They use two very different types of encoding technologies and are definitely not compatible. But I like the creativity. And plus, now I have a turntable, which I bought for this. Okay, so you might be wondering why I didn't give out any 10 out of 10s on the destruction scale, even though a lot of them clearly destroyed our hard drives. And that's because while they might have made the drives inaccessible to our PC here, that doesn't necessarily mean all the data on the drives themselves are fully destroyed. Remember, the data is stored magnetically, which doesn't go away just because the circuits on the hard drive are not compatible anymore. So if there's enough interest in this video, I'll follow it up by taking all of the 8 out of 10s and higher from this experiment today and sending it off to a professional data recovery company. That way we can see which of these methods actually made the data disappear and which ones didn't. So if you want to see something like that, let me know by liking this video or leaving a comment down below. But until next time, I'm Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinker, and I'll catch you in the next one.